Welcome to the webinar for flexible integration of human-robot collaboration in electronic and battery production. My name is Senia Beltran, and I'm the head of Big Data and Lab Supporting Technologies at Polytechnic University of Madrid, as well as a member as the deputy coordinator of the budget projects. First of all, I would like to thank all the people and the companies that have joined us today in this webinar, and all the Voyex team that has made possible this workshop. Now we are in Italy, in Turin, at OSI premises, where is the first pilot that is integrated the Voyex robotic-based solution. This is the first of a series of workshops that we are we have planned to present the Voyex use cases experiences and how we are integrating the Voyex technologies in the industry. We are doing one webinar for each Voyex pilot that is integrating the Voyex technology. In each webinar and today, we will be sharing first a short summary of the project, the experience of the Voyex use cases that are piloting the Voyex system, including the Voyex, the Voyex and pilot's characteristics, technical aspects being piloted in the use case, the challenges being addressed by these pilots, and a short live demonstration of what we are doing and how we're integrating the technology. So let's start. What is Vojex? Vojex is a 42 month project that started in July, 2020. It is sponsored by the European Union under the Horizon 2020 research framework. Vojex means value of joint experimentation in digital technologies for manufacturing and constructions that are the sectors where we are implementing the Vojex solution. Our goal is to produce a set of mobile robotic systems that can be and that can enable new ways of automation in human robot collaborative environments that can interact with machines, sensors, and other systems. This is done with the aim of one, supporting the demand for flexible production, which is especially uh, important for medium science manufacturing companies now in Europe, supporting flexible configuration in their production lines, enable favorable also business and technological framework for what is called cognitive systems. Those are the systems that can understand, learn, and support decisions. To experiment with, con with cognitive technologies, we're also bringing other companies and artists to our project. So not only the use cases that you will see during this workshop, but also we will have some other um, webinars and presentations of the people that is joining our project. We have launched some open calls to offer this opportunity and to work with us and participate in projects to some other companies. in digital technologies for manufacturing and constructions that are the sectors where we are implementing the project solution. Our goal is to produce a set of mobile robotic systems that can be and that can enable new ways of automation in human robot collaborative environments that can interact with machines, sensors, and other systems. This is done with the aim of one, supporting the demand for flexible production, which is especially uh, important for medium science manufacturing companies now in Europe, supporting flexible configuration in their production lines, enable favorable also business and technological framework for what is called cognitive systems. Those are the systems that can understand, learn, and support decisions. To experiment with, con with cognitive technologies, we're also bringing other companies and artists to our project. So not only the use cases that you will see during this workshop, but also we will have some other um, webinars and presentations of the people that have, is joining our project. We have launched some open calls to offer this opportunity and to work with us and participate in projects 
to some other context. How are we reaching our objective? We are a consortium that is composed by 19 partners from 11 European countries. Um, we are developing a platform. Um, this platform is intended to create the capabilities and infrastructure that allows to connect secure mobile robotic systems as the Kairos, which is the one that you are looking there from Robert Nick, a company that is in our consortium, okay, in an easy way to the factory systems with safety and security characteristics and ensuring human robot collaboration. To evaluate our platform, we're testing and integrating the Voyex platform in five companies from different sectors. We are implementing it and testing our system in Pemu in Hungary, which is a, um, from the plastic sector and is a company that is dedicated to produce polyurethane pillows. Okay, so they have ma and viscoelastic, viscoelastic materials. Um, we are implementing it in Italy here in in Osai, where we are. It's a company uh, dedicated to electronics and fragile and, and manipulation of fragile components, okay, as it is an automation company. We're implementing also Vojex at Mercedes-Benz in Turkey, which is, uh, we are implementing inside and um, the automotive smart manufacturing, and Mercedes is an automotive, pro, um, is in the automotive sector and producing trucks. We are also implementing into other type of companies that are manufacturing at other scale in very small companies like the ones dedicated in for crafts okay, and artisans. And this is in Italy also, but in Naples. Okay, and the company is um, Officina Keller. And lastly, we are also testing our system in the construction system, our construction industry in Acciona in Spain for building and construction um, um, infrastructures, okay? And that's where we are testing our robot. Given this summary of uh, our um, consortium or our project, okay, I would like to hand uh, to Ali Story, who is going to present what we're doing in OSI, what we're doing in this pilot, the rationale behind adopting Vojex, okay? Their experience, uh, with the Vojex technologies at their premises. So, Alice, the floor is yours. Okay, uh, hi to everybody. Um, I'm Alice Tori from uh, OZAI. I'm the head of the R&D department. And um, now uh, we start from uh, a short presentation of uh, OZAI. Uh, Ozai is uh, an Italian SME. We are located in the north of Italy. And uh, his founder, uh, Carlo Ferrero, started the company three, th 30 years ago. Um, the main uh, topic of Ozai is to design and develop and assembly uh, automation machine for different purposes. In the, in the video you are seeing now, there are different examples of uh, the kind of automation we, we develop and we install to our customer. Um, we design uh, automation for uh, electronics, the semiconductor, uh, also biomedical and uh, other sectors uh, of uh, application. Um, in particular, our expertise is uh, in uh, integrating the automation in uh, automatic system equipped with the vision control and quality check of the of the um, of the production so uh, because of our big expertise in uh, in automation uh, why ozai is interested in uh, in vojek's project um, we in vojek in vojek uh, ozai as a replicate um, an industrial use case um, and uh, we have uh, prepared and presented the, the project uh, in, uh, 
in an industrial trade show in Automatica, in which we present with a video um, how the system can work in a real industrial um, automation design. Uh, you can see here uh, how the use case was set up. We did uh, some uh, preliminary phase of integration, testing, uh, and experiment with the, um, the partner of the uh, Vojax project. And uh, we test uh, the, the Vojax system and the Vojax concept uh, um, standalone and uh, in his different parts. Now what you can see is a replication of uh, a kind of automation that uh, we install already um, to our customer. And uh, we stress and we concentrate uh, on the flexibility that such kind of uh, uh, approach and process can uh, be added to the standard automation production. Um, in, in particular, now we are going to, to present and to show in much detail how the Vojax system has been integrated uh, into the, the use case. Later on, you will see the live demo of what now I explain you uh, in much more details uh, and showing some specific parts. Now it is a speed up um, session of uh, the manufacturing of uh, one, one kind of product. And at certain point, uh, we need to change the production to another product. Uh, so the Vojax system uh, started to interact and to intervene to support the operator in changing the configuration of the system. Um, the use case was set up to, to present how it works. Uh, in particular, uh, stressing and highlighting the interaction between uh, the human and the collaborative robot for uh, flexible uh, production, which is a, a desire for many uh, of, uh, of the customer. This is an neuromorphic camera uh, equipped with Vojax system, and uh, here you can see how it works. The neuromorphic camera is monitoring the operator during the interaction with the robot, in particular seeing if the operator uh, become fatigued or if something occurred during the, the action and allowing the system to intervene with the alarm or with uh, uh, something to, to be done to support the human during the interaction with the robot. Uh, as you can see, there are a lot of uh, interaction between the two operator and the mobile robot, uh, which is supporting the change of production. For sure, there is a, um, an HMI that's uh, able to, to interact with the system. And now you see the assembly of the new product, which is out of the project project. So this is why it was speed up. And uh, in particular, the interface allowed to communicate between the two systems and with the neuromorphic camera, who is always monitoring and intervene during the uh, interaction phase. Another interesting point developed in the project is the gesture that allows the operator to communicate and to interact with the mobile robot. What you are seeing now is uh, the demonstrator set up to show you all together in the, um, in the demonstration. Uh, the, um, the storage system can be away from the principal system uh, of production. So the mobile robot can also do a lot of um, distance to cover a lot of distance to reach the part to bring to the operator. And another important thing to say is that now we see one system working with one mobile robot, but it can be parallelized to increase the productivity and to reduce cost. In this sense, uh, also the possibility to use uh, one mm -hmm. hardware to do different uh, production and uh, to, to process different mm -hmm. products, follow to reduce cost and uh, to increase the efficiency of, uh, of the system. The robot and the operator always work uh, in two different areas which are only delimited for uh, a signal because we 
we have the need to interact and do, to intervene with the robot. If you pay attention to the interaction, you see that uh, there is a, a grasping system that allows the robot to handle any kind of, um, of components needed to the, uh, to the reconfiguration and allows the operator to do uh, a smart movement uh, to the robot and in the same sense, allow the robot not to intervene with uh, his safety control because the gesture is um, ergonomic and well-defined and steady. So now we see the, the ending of the reconfiguration again in speed up mode. And uh, now the system is ready for the um, production of uh, a, different, uh, a different product. So again, uh, uh, Vojex proj project allowed to uh, introduce the flexibility into an industrial environment and to uh, support the communication through the gesture between the human and, uh, and the robot. Uh, everything uh, with the vision and the control of the neuromorphic camera approach to monitor what is happening in real, in real time and eventually to intervene. Okay, now I, I give again the, the, the floor to, to Xenia for a couple of words and then we can start the the live demo session of, uh, of today. We really hope uh, that the experience of OSI is interesting for you and we hope to, to receive some questions. Um, and let's say, because uh, we believe that the experience of OSI shall be interesting for many other SMEs in the manufacturing sector. Today, the manufacturing industry is facing new challenges in these fast changing demands for products and, systems and customers from, from their services, from their customers, let's say. And um, the customers are pushing the manufacturers for more flexible and adapted approaches. And this is what OSI is doing. So for OSI and its customer, the customer of batch size production is important and is to be highly customized and, and, and to, to get to short lead production models. So this is what we want to, to, de to demonstrate in this use case. This is what we, we would like you to, to, to see if it, is, if, if it is a learning lesson for all the SMEs. And then we're going to go to the live demo so you can see what we are doing in Vojex, okay? Integrating this in a real manufacturing environment an operative environment as OSI has, has approached. Okay. And we hope that is of your interest and we hope you really like it. So we will go where we are right now here at the production environment. So we will turn the cameras and you will see what we are doing with the robots. Okay, so uh, also from my side, welcome to everybody to this uh, uh, live session, uh, which is uh, showing the uh, voyager system applied to the use case of OSI. Uh, uh, my name is Mark, and I'm also working in the R&D department of OSI. And today with my colleague, Ricardo, we will uh, show to you some basic functionalities uh, of uh, the system working. So uh, basically, the idea is that uh, uh, the Voyager system, as also was described before, uh, is able to assist uh, our work cell, work cell in different jobs, uh, and especially in the reconfiguration of the work cell. Uh, so um, in this case, uh, as you can see, we just finished the production of uh, one component, which is the, um, related to the production of electronic components called power modules. And I will uh, uh, go ahead uh, and reconfigure uh, our work cell uh, in order to carry out uh, uh, further production of another component, which are uh, batteries uh, uh, pack modules uh, to, to be assembled on the same uh, um, uh, work cell that you see here. So. Thank you also to the uh, graphic user interface uh, uh, of the Vojex system. I can always uh, monitor the, um, uh, say the, the workflow of the system and uh, the job the system is carrying out uh, and all these uh, um, uh, really uh, interesting insights. Uh, also, we will have uh, an HMI on our side that will uh, uh, communicate uh, with the Vojex system uh, in order to exchange uh, uh, information uh, regarding the, um, the, the tasks that the border system has to perform. So in this case, I will start um, asking the system to come here and get this plastic box uh, that is full uh, of the products that uh, 
were already assembled in the previous production. So the robot approached the station and the nice thing is that all I have to do is to interact with the robot with a gesture, which is a really nice feature. So basically right now the robot is approaching me and uh, uh, through the GUI, I can see the information that uh, uh, yeah, I have to load the, this object uh, in this particular case. So the robot is idle, I can manipulate it and load the object. And then it will wait for a further confirmation. I can always monitor the situation with my GUI, but also the nice thing is that while the robot uh, is uh, performing other tasks, I can take advantage of this opportunity to reconfigure part of the station. So I will remove uh, all the parts related to the previous production. In the meanwhile, uh, the robot can go to, uh, uh, to um, a warehouse, for instance, uh, and bring uh, all the stuff that is not needed anymore. So the two operations can proceed in parallel uh, and optimize the uh, cycle time. <laughs> OK, so. Right now, I'm going to switch production. So as I said before, I don't want to produce any more this kind of products because we requested that we are requested a change in production or because we, fi we finished the previous production. So we changed to the new one. And in this case, uh, I will just do basically the same thing, but vice versa. I will ask the robot to bring me all the items that I need to carry on the next production. So. Let's start. Now I just ask the robot that I have to, care, to carry to the work cell the first uh, um, uh, pallet, let's say, the first blister, uh, which carries some of the components that are required in the assembly of the um, battery pack that you will see in a few minutes. So the also nice feature of the robot is that uh, it can uh, uh, also thanks to the way it's designed, it can navigate and move uh, in an optimized way uh, to in order also to um, uh, reduce the cycle time and uh, uh, to to cover also uh, bigger distances. So now the robot is also approaching. And it's waiting for me to unload the item that was selected through the, through the, the graphic user interface. So I've detached the object and uh, the robot is waiting for me, for me to confirm uh, the action again. Okay. As I said, I can always monitor all the uh, feature uh, all, and all the data of the robot uh, through my panel. And we will proceed in the same way, loading all the remaining stuff in order to start the production. Thank you. 
Now Ricardo is performing the same uh, action. So he's confirming the robot that is uh, in place and ready to load the part that is uh, needed. Uh, of course, for uh, you know sake of simplicity, uh, we uh, have organized it in this way in terms of spaces, but you can imagine that uh, this robot uh, is able to uh, reach a uh, um, warehouse that maybe it's not so close. And also uh, the even more nice feature is that, is that uh, it can um, uh, serve more station in parallel uh, so that uh, when it's idle, because one station is not requiring uh, any, um, any action, uh, in the meanwhile, it can, it can uh, take the opportunity to carry out further action as well. And just 10 more minutes oh. because questions will be fast. We don't have questions. Again, I will load the last two parts remaining and we can start the production. Also, uh, the, there's another important aspect that uh, maybe it's worth to underline, uh, which is the fact that, uh, uh, as was also commented before, uh, the, or the robot can also assist the person uh, and in, in a more ergonomic way so that uh, the person doesn't have to carry maybe uh, heavy loads or uh, even if the loads are not uh, much heavy, uh, in a maybe eight hour uh, uh, time span uh, of, a, of a turn in the in the factory, uh, even uh, low loads can can be um, uh, harmful for the operator uh, if, uh, when they are repeated several times. Uh, so it's uh, uh, helping also the operator and the the company as well uh, with with, res with this respect. Okay, so we have just load the last one and we can start the production. Also, you can see that when the robot uh, is approaching uh, the operator uh, and is not carrying uh, any any kind of uh, item, uh, is uh, asking for uh, say a double confirmation uh, of of the operator being present in the scene, 
uh, because uh, I mean to, to increase the safety because the operator can be maybe busy doing other stuff so not to be harmful to the operator these are uh, another safety aspect that it's uh, good to to underline in the meanwhile I'm informed that the robot will reach me Okay, so right now all the parts are loaded, I can start the productions. So it's now our production will start. And uh, this was uh, um, uh, an example of uh, how the workflow um, may look like. Uh, right now the robot uh, uh, is idle, but as I said before, uh, we, we could exploit the robot to do uh, other uh, uh, operation in the meanwhile, uh, as soon as we will have many uh, cells um, in parallel. And okay, so from my side, uh, uh, that's all. We will run uh, uh, the robot so that you can also see a uh, uh, full uh, um, battery pack being assembled. Now, now the the system is uh, is simulating the assembly of uh, of um, batteries for uh, e mobility application. Uh, if you um, if you want to click uh, on the camera showing the real time, the the system going ahead to to show in the the complete cycle. And in the meanwhile, we can uh, answer some some question that uh, reach us. Uh, maybe I leave the floor to Xenia and to see. Thank you, Alice. Uh, yes, we have some questions uh, that are coming and that have been taken uh, from the chat, okay? So um, we have one question for, for, for you and actually for the use case. Is it possible to handle more than two, product, two productions with this system? Yeah, maybe Marco will answer. Yes, can you hear me? Yeah. Perfect. Uh, yes, of course, it, it is uh, possible. 
because the system uh, is conceived to be uh, flexible and modular uh, in a way that we can handle, uh, yes, more than two products. The only uh, need is to design uh, the tooling uh, of the system in a way that is compatible with the gripper of the robot. Uh, but in this way, uh, you can uh, handle different kinds of objects and uh, uh, assist different uh, uh, production. Uh, also, you have to uh, uh, update, of course, the software, load the items on the software, but it's uh, something that is uh, absolutely feasible to, to be done. Thank you, Marco. Also, we have another question, um, uh, which uh, the doubt is that, is, is it required to have uh, a specific area for the navigation of the robot as such? Yeah, uh, the answer to this one, yeah. so we have one question for each. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. Um, okay, for sure we need uh, um, a way in which the mobile robot can, uh, can move inside the establishment. And um, in case of a small enterprise or a small area in which the robot and the, the, the person have to interact and collaborate, uh, there is the need to limit at the maximum the, the area needed from the, the, robot, the mobile robot. Um, in particular, it is important to have a, a, let's say, protected area where the operator is, uh, is moving and is working and then uh, an area for the mobile robot to moving uh, uh, close to the, to the system and around uh, the plant. And there will be an interface uh, area in which it happens the interaction. In this case, uh, we investigate a lot during the project, the interaction, how the operator can pass an information to the, to the robot. So in this area is the point where the human become in contact with the robot. Thank you, Anis. Um, I'm going to jump one question, so we leave it literally to the end. Okay, so um, and we have another question that is, in, in case there is an operator in the moving area of the robot, uh, what happens and what you can do? Yeah, so. I can try to answer, sure. sure. Um, the robot is uh, embedded with a laser sensor uh, on its side. Uh, so in case uh, an operator enter uh, in the scene and approach the robot, the robot will uh, stop, uh, preventing in this way a collision with the, with the operator or with the person. Also, a uh, very important feature is the fact that uh, depending also on the speed the robot, the robot is approached by the human, the reaction uh, time uh, uh, will uh, will change uh, accordingly in order to have a prompt reply by by the robot, and uh, uh, also um, as soon as the person uh, moves away, uh, the robot will uh, uh, recover the, the the previous mission and will uh, carry on uh, the mission. Thank you, Marco. Uh, there is another question, which is that if the grippers uh, of the robot can be change <laughs> can we change or adapt to other scenarios um well i, I will let uh, marco this answer and also we will comment from the project perspective mm -hmm. okay um the the idea is that the automation become uh, as flexible as possible in the future so um the gripper yes can be adapted to another uh, scenario uh, the best solution will be to have uh, just one gripper that fits all the needs. Um, if uh, the, um, the two products could be too many different, uh, for sure we can consider a traditional approach, which is the, the change of the, grip, the gripper that can, uh, can occur using the Vojax technology, for example. So again, a collaboration between the, the robot and the human. Um, yes. Um, also, we would like to comment on on this question from the project perspective. Actually, we we are also trying to demonstrate that the robot can be multi-purpose, uh, not only to support the flexibility and the change of productions, but meaning for multi-purpose is to have like different gadgets or different grippers, okay, that support the production lines. You will see this in other scenarios, and actually you will see that we are using the same robot with different grippers and with different ways to connect to the production systems in the different use cases. 
So it will be great that for these kind of um, approaches and, and to see the difference in between how the robots work in the different scenarios, not only scenarios, but in the different uh, industrial uh, settings of different um, industrial types, let's say, because right now uh, Osite is quite focused on electronics, but as we commented in, in, in the introduction, okay, we have other partners that are either in the plastic sector, in the construction sector, that they go with arts and craft. So for this, we, we have adapted different grippers. We will see also in the other use cases, how you can change grippers and actually support flexibility, not only in production lines, but when you provide service as when you are in the construction uh, um, sites. Um, as for for this, okay, um, we we have uh, also um, uh, the the question that um, is required to have specific area for navigation of the robot. Let me see. Um, Yes, um, actually, uh, I think we can cover most of the questions that, that we have in, in, in the chat and the ones that we have received, okay? Uh, hopefully we're not skipping uh, anyone's question. But before ending, I really think it, it, it's interesting uh, to, to have a question to, to Osai, because um, they, Alice, on, on your perspective, um, Osai is already a, a big automation uh, well, you're an SME, but you know, with a, with with a big automation background, and actually, your your um, um goal is to produce automation machines. So you are in the sector. We saw in the introduction of Osai that you already work with big robots, and you have integrated robots in your production line. So you are quite advanced in the robotic area to be an SME of the size you are. So. Would you like to share why Vojex and why you are interested in the Vojex systems and technologies that were developing in the project and why this kind of R&D project is interesting uh, for you and to, to come to this project and share this kind of, of experimentation, okay, in your operator in operational environment. So I think this could be interesting for the SMEs that are listening in, uh, today to us. Yeah, uh, I would like to, to thank you for the question because uh, I have the opportunity to, to say some more words about our company. Uh, yes, we are very expertise in automation uh, and uh, uh, time by time we try to reach the high tech solution and to integrate all the new technology in our system. Uh, the concept uh, proposed to Vojex project is something new also for us. And uh, in particular, it covers some question and some, uh, uh, let's say, desiderata that comes from our customer. They always ask us um, um, flexibility in automation. So the, the customer usually wants a robot or a system that can automize everything. And our our answer usually is it is impossible. Uh, you can handle some products, but uh, you have to be customized for the specific products. Otherwise, you lose in uh, in efficiency and uh, in cycle time and in effectiveness. In this case, uh, we really have the opportunity to to test and uh, to increase our know how and expertise in something. Uh, that goes in the direction to give uh, um, a flexible automation to uh, to customers. So a solution able to be quickly adapted and switched to one product to the other, which is something really important uh, also in the future for, um, for application that uh, will handle products that can change quickly or needs that can be adapted day by day um, in parallel with the, the growth of the technology. Another important aspect uh, is about um, the possibility to process in parallel different products. Again, it's something uh, um, really required from the market. And uh, uh, in the real situation, uh, uh, each gripper has each product or each part of product. In the future, we can think about a gripper that will be able to adapt and to uh, 
let's say in an intelligent matter to uh, to cope with the need of the different parts in production and uh, if i may uh, i think it can be also interesting to know from your academic point of view uh, how the flexibility of automation uh, how do you see the flexibility of automation and uh, the new technology that can be uh, applied also outside the the academy and uh, uh, and your world uh, that uh, meet the industrial world in these in such kind of project uh, for uh, a real very nice opportunity to test and to learn new things and to increase our uh, our know-how through let's say a word uh, that we say uh, which is the cross fertilization between the different sectors um yeah thank you alice uh, as a project for projects and and actually all the comments for the academic well academic but um let's say we we are at the the innovation like at the last point where it gets innovation close to the to the industry okay so it's very industry oriented the, and and for this project okay it's an innovation action that is it it, get, it it aims to to get close to the to the industry i think to have a use case in an sme that has grown okay in technology but it's, it, it is a it, it came as a family oriented manufacturing company i think the idea of having batch size of one production model seems to be a promising solution okay for the challenges that currently the manufacturing industry is, is having we believe that using mobile collaborative robots instead of only fixed robots okay uh, some of the spaces can be reused okay to actually allow this flexibility in production that is needed when you need batch sized production. So actually this kind of like short productions and then you need to change. Um, COVID actually showed us that this uh, way of assembly system each time is more needed, okay? We will need uh, to cover not only from Europe, okay? Much more production to, to our customers and not depend also that much, okay, in, in other areas. So I think the, 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 the capability of the industry to be able to quickly change, okay, productions and be flexible is each time much more important. Um, we also think that the possibility that a robot, okay, that is mobile, that also links, okay, and we have a case in an open call that goes in this direction, that is link uh, production with a logistic part also could be important. Um, the idea is that a robot uh, could be shared, okay, in a collaborative manner with uh, humans, okay, next to, ne next to, one to another one so actually they become like comates like and the cobot that we are presenting um keeping the safety and security as you you can see we uh, we they, they really interact with the robot okay and actually secure and we have evaluated and tested this before even this demonstration and i think the idea of having the robot share it for producing several products is is it, it would be quite um good okay to be uptaken by the industry so I would like to take the advantage of one last question because I think it would be nice okay, for the people to know like how easy or what do you need to 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 have as a as an industry as a company to adopt a solution like this um during the the project okay we have gone gone through several processes okay and we know for example that actually to to allow and to to get all the processes for anything that has to do for the ro mobile robot to move and to recognize the environment is not easy so could you give some kind of like recommendation to other companies or to other smes uh to actually try to take over this um uh, approach and engage in in a solution like Vojax. Okay, um, for sure to integrate such solution, the first things that you need uh, is uh, space. Not uh, only in terms of dimension of the space you need, but in terms of organization of the space around your system and the connection between the system and something which can be the storage or another station or something else which is not uh, physically connected to the system. So this uh, can be the first uh, recommendation to, to think very well and to define very well uh, the logistics around uh, the system. Uh, 
the second point uh, is, uh, um, let's say, to be open mind and uh, to try to adapt and to fix something that seems uh, so far away to the to the real life into the into the machine because uh, it can really bring uh, uh, technology and innovation into the system the future will be the collaboration between human and robots so in the past uh, there was only the operator then we have a fully automated uh, uh, period and now my opinion is that uh, we are in the in the era of the collaboration between the human and the robot. And so we need to change again our mindset uh, from, from, the, from the past. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Alice. Well, first for hosting us and for hosting this demo live and actually the whole integration. Okay, so actually uh, it's been a pleasure. Um, we also would like to invite you to the next demonstration. It will take place on October 25th um, in Hungary. We will be integrating our system there and we will do a live demonstration like this one in, in the area of uh, plastics as PEMU is a company that is doing viscoelastic uh, uh, pillows. And this is the use case and the manipulation and, and actually the integration of a collaborative mobile robot like the one uh, with the system around that that we are producing in Bojex, okay, to be able to communicate with the production system, as you have seen in OSI, we will be doing the same in, in that case, but to their machines and see their needs and their requirements. And to you also, you can gain on the experience that all these industrial companies have gained with uh, the project. So keep tuned and uh, you can follow us in both in LinkedIn and, and Twitter. Um, you can see uh, our developments and what we are doing in our website. And you have an email if you wish to contact us and if you have any doubt or question. So registration is coming soon for the next demonstration. And then thanks a lot again, Alice. Thanks a lot for the Voyage team for actually making possible not only the integration, but this live uh, workshop, okay? So keep tuned and we'll see each other next time. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you to you. I also would like to, to thank you, to thank you all that attending the workshop. And in particular, I would like to thank all the people that stay here in the last uh, past days to set up everything and uh, to, to make it possible today. So thank you very much. Thanks. Bye-bye. See Bye. you in next demo. Bye.